Good afternoon, guys. Uh, it's already almost evening, and we'll try to get going as fast as we can. Um, this is the last session for Edge Sorter. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at some of the new features, some of the code to cache uh, applications at the demo booth, but we will have a fast going session. We have lots in store to show you, both from the apps and the different experiences that we have built, but we have a brand new designer tool that we want to showcase as well. Uh, with that, there's a standard safe harbor. The thing is, uh, so myself, Pranav Shah, I run the group, uh, director of advanced applications, and what I have with me is Jared Casper. He's a product evangelist, been with Aptos a long time, and I guess most of you already know him. Thanks, Pranav. Hey, everyone. Um, can everyone hear me? Yep, perfect. So everyone has a CRM system, whether it's Salesforce, Dynamics, you have your CRM system for your enterprise applications, you've built out custom pages, you're driving users to go into these CRM systems to drive adoption. Um, they're amazing products, but you typically are working on a single record at a time. Most people are trying to figure out better alternative user interfaces, um, but it is what it is. You have your CRM system today, you've built your workflows, your approvals, and again, people are using it the way that you've delivered it or trying to use it that way. You also have Excel, and people are still struggling with getting away from Excel spreadsheets. People are familiar, you're comfortable, you love Excel, the speed, the familiarity, you can do many things at a single time. So what we're doing with XAuthor is we're allowing you to continue to work in Excel, but be in your CRM. Have your enterprise controls, your security control Excel on the back end, but have your users be able to interact with that data through an alternative interface, which is Excel in this case. And by doing this, we're bringing together two very powerful products. You know, there's over 1.5 billion Excel users worldwide today. People have built out enterprise applications in Excel. You have VBA, you have formulas. Sometimes it's difficult to replicate that experience in your CRM system today. So we're allowing, again, users to take the best of Excel, but get away from some of the baggage. You're no longer storing things on your desktop. You no longer have issues around versions. You can continue to use Excel in the way that it's intended, but you're bringing your CRM system in the back end. So you're truly getting the best of both worlds, and you can see here, those two worlds are now colliding. And when we started to build XAuthor, we had a very simple mission statement, which was, we have seen our enterprise code to cache applications, they were in different forms, uh, probably five years ago when we started on the XAuthor journey, but we wanted to speed and everything up and we wanted to bring an Excel-like experience. We, we took to this problem a little differently. We didn't try to make the web browser more smarter, more agile. We tried to say that, okay, Excel is great. Why don't we build the CRM within Excel? And let's see what, where we go. We had no, when we started, we had no hopes we'll go beyond reporting. But then we started building and we started filing more and more features. And then our mission statement became more like, everything that you do in XAuthor has to be two-way only. There is nothing that you will ever pull back which you cannot write back to. So it, it has to be simple and meaningful, data rich as you can see, and you will see a lot of examples of this. We will show you some of the apps which are extremely fast and productive, and you probably be wondering how this technology is working, how this data is coming down. We'll show you that in action. And then, it, it, you know, this is purely by our experiences in last five years of developing apps and hundreds of customers, maybe thousands of apps that Jared and I have scanned through. Uh, we see it's a very versatile user experience. Um, I won't get into the designer experience bullets over here because you will see something live in action. This is the brand new designer that we want to launch today. So if you've seen a demo of XAuthor, you've seen this use case. Um, we typically start here because this is probably one of the more common use cases that customers use the product for today. This is using opportunities, but the tool works on any object, standard or custom. But for this example, it's looking at a list of data in Excel. You have Excel speed, you have Excel functionality, whether it's sorting, filtering, whether you want to leverage conditional formatting to do some color coding in here. It supports all data types, so if it's a pick list in Salesforce or a pick list in Dynamics, it's going to be a drop down here as well. And users get the, again, experience that they're trying to achieve, which is making mass changes across as many records as you would like. Your security model is still controlling what the user can access. The user can make all their changes here real time, and those changes can go back into your CRM. Any workflow triggers, approval processes that are set up in your CRM system today continue to work the same way. Um, there's no limit to the number of columns, the number of records. Again, you're in Excel. Here's another example. It's extremely data rich. 
This is a very different view of what you, most of you would have seen as an app test quoting card. This is a data rich renewals engine which one of our customers is doing. What they do is they have multiple child cards which is one of our newest features of CPQ. All the data from different child cards is all consolidated as you can see. The third column, the quote numbers are all different and only the license lines are brought up. Very simple app but very useful. The support numbers for each of your hardware or the software which you sell are all rolled up automatically and those are some of the columns to the right where you see the support price and all. And then down below they wanted to see another grid of the support lines as well. So you make a change at the parent level, it is already automatically trickling down and invoking the right CPQ functions behind the scenes. So extremely data rich. Uh, here's another example of another customer who wanted to use professional services automation, but they do extreme levels of planning and forecasting. So you see is different resources which needs to be allocated to a project which needs to start in the future. Uh, there is a schedule line and there's an actual line against every resource. You will see hours and dollars allocated against every resource. That is again planning out into the future. Some of the projects kind of go up to two and a half years. So they do a 554 model, sometimes they do 544 model, and they do different kind of um, fiscal quartering based on different uh, parameters based on the countries they operate in. The simple UI over here, some of the stars that we added, you will notice that each of the star represents a different object which is supporting this data. And some of them are related, some of them are sometimes not even related. And it can be very easily combined into an Excel-like format. Again, very easily is relative based on what you need, but looking at 12 different objects being combined, the fiscal calendar is pulled per year, per quarter, per that country. Every color-coded cell that you see in between is based on either the resource not working to the optimum plan level, or there could be a holiday in that particular resources location. That's all considered right here. Um, some of the areas on the right side might be grayed out because there were holidays in that country uh, because that resource was in a different uh, locale for a single project. Okay, last one, and again, we're gonna see a live demo, so we will look into the product. Um, and as Pranav mentioned earlier, we've been at this for four years now, and we still see new use cases every week. There's no limit to what people can do in Excel. Most people, if you look internally, you've incorporated Excel in your own way, you have your own format, but this is just trying to show you kind of the art of the possible. This last use case is a clinical trials customer of ours. You can see you can have as many grids as you would like, you can have as many worksheets as you would like. Um, this is actually coming from a data model where there's four or five different objects, where they have their countries, they have their visits, they have their screening. Again, it's a clinical trial customer who's looking at plotting out their screening across visits and countries, and then you can even incorporate things that you're used to in Excel, autofill, uh, apply attrition, do you wanna fill these tables out? Again, driving user experience and giving the users a very flexible way of interacting with lots of records, whether it's a table, whether it's a list, uh, it's up to you. And, and the reason we didn't wanna overwhelm you, but we wanted to show you some of the use cases which are possible, but we also wanted to introduce a designer which will now get you there much faster than what it was. What we have heard many times loud and clear was the feedback that yes, it's a powerful tool, but it takes a while to build the app. Not anymore, we're launching something which is gonna automate and do these things at a lightning speed. So what we have done is, so in order to do justice, I'm gonna actually try to play a video. I haven't started it yet. Um, and I will pause it at different points in time. You might know some parts of designer and we kind of hope that you know so you can correlate to this. But even for those who are seeing it for the first time, some of the things are extremely straightforward how you would design. Think of that as you're starting a painting on a blank piece of paper and we are giving you brand new tools on the right side to now paint. You don't need to paint one thing at a time. You can now take pictures from other places and put it right in there. The first feature, we're gonna kind of go past it. It's called centralized admin you would notice that we have now consolidated a lot of different things, even the license assignment, the log keeping, the bookkeeping, the app management, all into one central place. Some of the sections we will go into um, would be auto update. Now you don't need to install and get a new version. We will automatically keep you in sync. There is a diagnostic mode if you ever wanna know, oh, I have 20 actions and click of this button. I'm retrieving, query. why is this query slow? Turn the diagnostic on and you will know in your logs as to what each of the steps took in terms of milliseconds. Um, these are some of the app details. This is what admins do always. And they kind of say, it's, it's kind of, we have to go to two, three different places to do one thing. 
not anymore. You just come here and here, uh, toggle out your app details, change any of your app settings that you need to, and even the app assignment. So let's just fast forward this a little bit to the next one. I'm just gonna pause here. So pause. So this is how typically you design. What you see up at the top, a standard Excel ribbon, and this is how you would design. You would create your map, display, say, your matrix map, and then you would dis define your action. This is a brand new way of creating your mapping. I, we feel it's much more intuitive, much more simple. Back in the day, what you had to do is you would have to go to each field and open the app and drag and drop it. You don't have to do that anymore. All you have to do, all you need to do now is take your object, drag and drop the object. This is already sorted with the name at the top and it's alpha sorted with all the fields. Let's say you want to move your stage field right next to your close it. Just simply drag and drop it. So you do your visual mapping all in here. If you ever had a formula or a formatting, we would actually move that along with the field. Um, and then you can add some blanks, you can go to the related object, and then very simply, just a click of a button, your maps are created. Not just the display map, all your save maps, save actions, all the configurations needed. So we're taking that complexity in the pain away, and we're just doing what is the most logical, and there are gonna be a lot more settings to customize it. You don't like the blue color, you can customize it. Pick a color of your choice. You don't like the square brackets, which are like your pointers of your formula row, you can, you can hide them as well. And this feature, I think, will resonate the most. Um, this is, I'm just gonna pause it here. Uh, this is the final piece of an app building process. You pick your objects, you create your maps, as you saw, and eventually you construct and combine all the guys together into a flow. You don't do it the way you do it now. This is a brand new orchestration engine that we have created. You pick your flow and for, you know, to, to move faster, I picked an existing flow and you now have a fully functional graphical designer where you can drag and drop your actions from the left. All the properties will come in. We have a brand new decision action. You can do, I don't know what you will build with this, but you have n number of capabilities, you can add multiple conditions, each condition can have multiple criteria in it, and this will go on and on as much as you want, and we have built a loop threshold as well, for now we just didn't want infinite loops, so we have a limited set of looping capabilities that we're introducing, and we're putting a hard cap on it, but we're gonna kind of make it flexible for you to even insert more and more loops. So this gives you a more orchestration level flexibility on what you need to do. Some of the actions you see on the left, uh, at the top. And let it focus over there, all right. So some of the actions we now introduce is a stop action, very simple message action. So you just wanna let a user know you wanna stop at a certain point and something didn't go right. But then there is a menu action as well, just so that you can control the visibility of your menus. So you can show a search button at the beginning of your app and you don't need to show any of your save buttons on a recalculate, reconcile buttons at all. So it all can be now controlled through this simple graphical user interface. You can drag and drop and use the full feature workflow engine. And then I just wanna highlight one more designer automation, which is one of our biggest features, and I kept it for the last, um, is if you ever wanna design apps today, you would pick an object and do the whole nine yards, not anymore, we introduced something called as the on-demand designer. Any point in your app flow, you can jump into an on-demand desi on designer that's available for enterprise and above editions. You can pick a new or an existing object. And one of the feedbacks we got is, make it easier for us to select fields and even make it so that you can auto-select fields. So we have introduced something called as, you obviously had the search capabilities but now you will have a database-based searcher, you have a required field searcher, and most importantly, you have a select all capability. So you can pick more fields in a very simple user interface. For this demonstration, we just picked all pick list fields and we went to the child object. In the child, you will just pick one of the objects, you'll probably pick some date time fields. One of the things you might have noticed even earlier is the big theme of this designer upgrade or autopilot mode, we call it, is defaulting. Back in the day, none of these things were selected. So right now, I'm just gonna pause here. A Lot of things in the previous screens in here are defaulted to what we think is the most logical value you want it to be, and it's configurable. Notice there are five rows per column as one of the values in here. 
and notice that there are number of blank columns that you want to leave. So see how this thing renders with this default value. All by clicking a simple finish button, we don't want to ask you any questions, all the names will be automatically selected for you. Is an app like this is automatically created. So you're ready to rock and roll with an app as simple as this. So creating your user experience from Salesforce to an ex-author app is extremely simple and you can have n number of configurations in an app. You can go to that uh, and we will see that in action as well. Um, but you can have n number of autopilot configurations as well. So I think we're doing good on time. Uh, and I don't think with this setup we can take questions right now, but we will right after this. Uh, I want to keep moving forward. Yeah, it looks amazing, Pranav. I see a lot of customers in here that are shaking their heads and I think are going to be pretty happy with the new designer. Um, Pranav talked a little bit about this, but our go-to-market strategy was really, and we've added to this slide, but our go-to-market strategy was kind of six different pillars of how customers were going to use the product and how we wanted to market towards customers. So the very first one is more around just helping with CRM adoption. This is probably, again, the easiest way people use Xauthor today. It's you already have something in your CRM system today, whether it's standard or custom objects. You want to surface that data into a more friendly user interface, which in this world is Excel, and you want users to be able to interact with more data more frequently and easier. So you can do anything that you have in your CRM system today and simply surface it into Excel. Standalone enterprise in our world, what that means is you can take legacy Excel workbooks. So things that are running parts of your business, they're hard to get away from. People have tried to go through Visual Force pages or other custom pages. You sometimes lose the user experience that you had originally. People are used to those Excel workbooks. So you can take those legacy workbooks and transform them into enterprise applications. You can leverage this exact same format. You have very little change management. You have user adoption almost at 100% day one, but now you actually have a data model behind it. You actually have security, you have visibility, you have the ability to have dashboards and reports. So again, Leveraging existing Excel workbooks and having your CRM on the back end. Calculate Anything, it's actually something that we call Presto, but it allows you to run Excel completely behind the scenes without the user seeing Excel or Excel even running on their machine. So in a lot of use cases, Excel is being used to run calculations. You want the results of those calculations. In order to run those calculations, you need some type of input, whether it's one piece of data, whether it's a thousand pieces of data. We can actually capture that information in your CRM system with a button click, have all that data sent to an Excel workbook. Again, this is not running locally on a user's machine. They're not seeing Excel. All of the VBA and formulas can process, and the results can get brought back to the user. So again, leveraging Excel the way that it was built, being able to handle lots of data, and run all those calculations again without the user seeing it. Um, advanced reporting, we actually didn't start out with anything around reporting, but what we found when we go back to customers and ask them how they're using the product is a lot of people are doing reporting in XAuthor. They just want to see the data out. It's because we don't have a limitation on the number of objects or fields or the number of objects you want to pull from simultaneously. There's no restrictions, so you can get around some of the reporting limitations that some CRM systems have. And people love their dashboards and their pivot tables and other charts in Excel. And then finally, data migration and data admin. So something that we really haven't talked about at all, we're not going to demo today, but data migration. Being able to move data from one environment to another, whether it's a staging environment to production, whether it's production to production, it'll understand the data model how the sequence should take place, so you can point it to 50 different objects, point to another target org, and all that data can be synced. It will do an upsert action, so if those records already exist, it won't create new, it'll update. If it doesn't find them, it'll create brand new. We use it internally all the time. If you guys are familiar with the other app that's offerings, Quote to Cache, almost every single Quote to Cache customer uses XAuthor for their data migration needs because we have a complex data model. A um, Couple more customer use cases. Again, this one's more showcasing we have the ability to look into your CRM system. We call it a search and select internally, but you can provide screens like this to a user that pops up and asks the user, what do you want to look at? Think of it as a data mining tool. You can have up to 20 fields, you can search different ways, you can say I want to look at this segment, uh, this region, these accounts, these owners, and then before actually selecting, you'll see your results in that bottom table. So a very quick and easy way to empower your end users to get to the data they want to get to. Um, and then another customer as well, Rogers. Um, again, leveraging XAuthor the way that it was intended, being able to look large amounts of volume, tens of thousands of records, lots of different columns, having different conditional formatting in here based on different logic, being able to drive the user to where they want to focus their attention based on colors. Again, data mining, uh, 
um, and then creating different type of user menus which you're gonna see in the product as well. These are some of the actual use cases. We just group them into different functional spaces. Uh, what we have seen customers build with XAuthor. Just a quick reference, again, you guys get a theme here, you can do anything with XAuthor with the CRM backend, so. And then let's jump into some more uh, videos and some more stuff. So you're, again, you're gonna see this in, in real time, but what we wanted to show is some of these applications, we wanna get more into the art of the possible. This one you've seen quite a bit, but it's showing now the ability to retrieve data. Again, it's gonna be based on that user's profile and permission, so you're only gonna be able to see the data based on that information that's sitting in your CRM. If it's a pick list, it'll be a drop down here as well. A lot of our customers like to leverage Excel tools like conditional formatting. Again, it's at your fingertips. If you know Excel how to do these things, you can incorporate it into these templates. And the user can just jump around record to record, field to field, make a bunch of changes. If you wanna have Excel sorting or Excel filtering incorporated in here, you can absolutely do that. What this is showing you is just updating five records. Updating five records, updating 20 records, 100 records inside your CRM would be a click into each record, click into each field. Might take you a couple hours. And here, seconds, couple minutes. The more data you're gonna be working with, the more, the faster and you can do it in here. Um, Save messages, this is an example of an actual required field. So I'll pause here. You saw it flash for a second. But what I wanted to show you there is if you have logic in your CRM, your validation rules, your required fields, that's still gonna be applied here as well. You don't have to rewrite that logic. You don't have to tell X author those things exist. So the user will get whether you wanna color it this color, whether you wanna color it a different color, they're gonna get those messages up front and say, you're missing a required field for this particular record. And then lastly, again, this user is just finishing and filling out the required field, clicking save, and it's now gonna accept it. But the last thing here is creating brand new. So you can do all of this in one click, but what we wanna show is the ability to update, create new. You can copy existing data, you can paste it here. You can have lookups, just like how CRMs work today, where you wanna double click and allow a user to look up a certain record. Um, so a lot of flexibility. This example is now on that enterprise transformation. So very different format. You have a legacy workbook, you have data all over the place. It's unstructured, but this is how people have Excel set up today. And you wanna to continue to leverage this format. So you can have fields flow right on top of your existing template. Again, very little change management for a user. You can drive whatever user selection you would like based on these screens. So a user can pick a record in this example. Based on that record selection, you might now have a second screen that you wanna to provide to the user. So you can have multiple screens here. And then finally, when the user has provided enough information, what will happen is the data will just flow right into this workbook. At this point in time, it's just how you would use Excel today. If you wanna work offline, whether you have to work offline, whether you're on a plane, it's Excel. You can save this locally to your machine. You can go in here and actually start manipulating the data. So a user might wanna manipulate some of these dates. They might wanna go into a second tab in here and start updating different tables. All of these tables are represented by different objects inside your CRM. So it's understanding your data model. You can make your changes, you can add new, you can insert. We'll let this user finish inserting. And then you can do things like Excel, whether a user wants to type in a number and then just simply drag. Again, you have all of this at your fingertips. And at the very end here, when we click save, in a couple seconds, a user updated one record on the top object, one record on a second object, a third record on a third object, updated seven records on a fourth object and created new. So jumped around a complex data model within two tabs here without a user having to know, not having to navigate, and all those changes are gonna get fed back into your CRM. And then I think we have one more example. So here's another example. That's my favorite. A lot of customers come to us with a complex view they wanna generate. They don't need a list, they don't need individual fields. They have what in our world we think of as a matrix, a table. You have data coming from multiple objects. People like to forecast a lot of times by either opportunities or products, and they wanna see a time period, weeks, months, quarters, and they wanna now plot data points from multiple objects into a table. So you can construct very complex views like you're seeing right now. Again, you can leverage coloring that Excel allows you to use, and instead of one row representing a single record. Notice this user is gonna make changes next to each other. 
but when they click save, that updated two different records. So now instead of one row representing one record, each individual cell represented, represented a record in here. I believe that's the last example of this video. Yes? Yes. Yep. So I think we have a couple more slides and then I just need to shut it down. we'll jump into the product demonstration. Mm -hmm. Is that where we're going to go? Yeah. Okay. So we are going to jump into a product demonstration. Um, we've already started. We've connected to our CRM environment. We want to show you something complex. We don't want to show you a list. So here's a customer that has multiple tabs. Data pulled from over 20 different objects to construct this view. The user still has the ability to come in here, make changes. So if I was to change, let's say, the region to the United States, notice on the right-hand side, again, you can leverage different Excel formula, whether it's simple or complex. A user can come in here and jump around, add the inputs that they need. We'll just add a couple more things in here to get some decent data. 100 and 200 must be popular. And we now have a table that we want to now save back to your CRM. This table was generated by Excel formulas, by taking our input. So you can pick out of an entire workbook which data needs to be retrieved from which objects and which data, in fact, you want to save back, whether it's a single field, whether it's a 100 field. And when the user's finally done, they can come in here and click Update. In this case, it's updating a record with as many fields that have been mapped in here. And you can continue the process. Do you want to submit for approval? Do you want to save a copy of this workbook as a PDF or Excel? Do you want to just save individual worksheets? Do you want to save the whole workbook for audit purposes? So you can store these entire workbooks as well and as records. Um, we're going to look at just a couple more examples. I think we're OK on time, yeah? Yep. So I'm going to show you a different flavor of a list. It's a little bit more complex. But in a lot of scenarios, users are now consuming and looking at so much data, you want to bring their attention to maybe where you want their focus to be. So now that we might be looking at thousands of records, what we're going to show in this example is a user can open up an application, again, drive the user experience however you may want it to be. I'm going to allow just a user to pick a couple records. So in here, we'll pick two records. Again, you'll, you'll be very pleased with the speed and performance, retrieving thousands of records very quickly. But what we're driving to the user here is an immediate focus on just a couple cells. So we've not only color-coded here, but we're showing the user, if I hover over this in comments, that another user, Pranav in this case, since I last looked at this data, made a change, and his previous data point was a different value. And we're leveraging this because your CRM system tracks this type of data. You can turn on these things and say, show changes. What's the previous value of a field? And we can take that data and surface it to a user. So when you're now consuming this much data, you can very quickly focus a user, show them in color, whether it's white, whether it's different, and show them that here's the other user that made a change. Here's what you need to immediately address, these four records. And then the very last example that we'll look at is This is another example of a, an existing workbook. This is a customer of ours that runs thousands of different events. They needed offline capabilities, and they needed the ability to not only look at their ticket sales, but also their concession sales. So how they pay their performers is they give them a percentage of the concessions, right there, right after the event. So they need to accurately understand what were their concessions, and we're going to cut that, sale, that performer a check. So in this case, again, someone can go through whatever user experience you want to get them through. I'm just going to pick a certain record. So we have a country band. We have certain information like the date, the event type, the weather, any other attribute you're looking to capture. Now, they not only want to be able to capture individual line items, like what were your sales for water, which I can go in and manipulate, but they want to be able to capture all the data that's affected by that change. So not I just changed one field, but it's updating 18 fields. 
Again, based on that one change, Excel is looking at all its formulas, all the calculations are updating, and it's now giving me a new total concessions, a new commission, a new check I need to write, and immediately it's back in your CRM. This customer rolled this application out, ran 3,000 events in three months, never had a single issue reported to us. And it was stood up in a matter of weeks. Uh, what, they, what they really had was this whole section, the way Jared showed it, we kind of opened it up for the demo. It is all locked down using the locking capabilities of XAuthor, and they had a browse feature. So the kiosk and the machines would kind of give an output report. Any kind of output report was mapped right into XAuthor. We will take the data in from all those kiosks, uh, all the vending machines, all the card swipes, and the data would all be consolidated. So they had like three or four browse buttons at the top and just fully automated per event. So just do it once and data is all centralized in CRM. I think that's it, right? That's it. So guys, that was it. Uh, that was our show. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, enjoy the drinks. Thank you.